Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I know, the title is extremely dramatic, so you're probably going into this with a degree of skepticism, but I promise you that by the time you make it to the end of the game, it will be worth your while, and you will be happy that you watch. Now, this story and this game is set in the chess.com pool. Uh, I am not going to tell you the ratings of the players or the time control until the end because it contributes to the name. Here we go. Now, our friend is from Canada, and the opponent is from Albania, hence the name Albanian warrior and the flag. Here we go. E4. E5, knight f3, knight c6. And this is known as the scotch opening. This is a great opening, actually, to play in e4, e5 positions, because many people here will play the bishop out, or like the Spanish, or the Italian, you know what I'm saying? But d4 is a great one. Black responds with pawn takes d4, uh, and knight takes d4. And what white wants is now to develop the pieces in the middle, and then just castle. That's like what we do here. Knight f6 is a main line move. It's the top move according to Grandmaster Theory. Uh, and uh, normally, uh, I mean, maybe black just got lucky, but normally you get like knight takes c6, pawn takes to not trade queens and lose the right to castle, e5, and then the queen pins the pawn, and then play continues. Um, but in this game, white uh, did not take on c6, but also white did not uh, defend the pawn. So white plays bishop to e3, and that's just a clean blunder of the pawn on e4. Uh, but black uh, has uh, knight dyslexia and actually takes the wrong knight. Uh, you actually had to take this pawn. This is completely unnecessary. What black needs to do here is finish development uh, or play like another pawn to the center. That's generally a good rule of thumb. Bishop c5 would run into a little tactic here. It's never too late to blunder or too early to blunder a, a full piece. Now knight takes c6 with the same idea, also attacks the bishop. So... That's just bad. It's a known trap. But knight takes e4 not played, instead knight d4. And here, without question, queen takes d4 is the best move. Uh, and it is the best move because normally you don't want your queen in the center if it can be attacked, but that knight has now been traded. So now white can play knight c3, even attack this knight in the center, and go long castles. Black responds with d6, which is a move that I love. Now here there is one and only one good plan for white. As far as I'm concerned, it's to play knight c3 and go long castle. So white gets some points for playing this. Uh, here I would just castle right away, but okay, I don't hate this move. Here and here. Now we are ready for the battle. Now white is a little bit better, a little bit better because more central space. I also would have liked to see white use a preventative measure here. If you look around and you go, what does black want to do? Well, black obviously wants to play knight to g4. If that's not obvious, well, that you've got to look in positions where you have a dominant space advantage and your pieces are more active, how your opponent can deal with that and how they can trade off certain pieces. And actually, the move knight g4 is exactly what happened in the game. Clearly, the idea of knight to g4 is to remove one of the major pieces in white's kind of active arsenal. Or it's to rotate the knight back to e5, where it attacks nothing once this bishop moves and will simply be a prime target to make white's attack even faster. Knight g4, knight e5 is awful. Completely awful. I mean, I, I, I don't know why you would reconsider on this. It's like driving three hours, getting to the hotel by the beach, and going, oh man, actually I don't really like it here. I'm gonna go back home. Just go to the freaking beach. I don't, you're already there. All right, then drive home. So, I'm um, speaking of my childhood experiences here. So, um, you need to make a preventative measure of this and actually maybe play F3 or H3 first because you're gonna castle queenside anyway and so you wanna launch these pawns at your opponent. So you might as well play F3 and, th and then do all that. But okay, 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 I digress, I digress. 95 here, bishop g5. Now bishop g5, is simply a terrible move because again, due to black's lack of space with the pawns, black is now trying to play with the pieces. You cannot just play with pieces. Your pawns need to determine how much space you have and what you can fight for, what squares you can fight for. Bishop g5 just loses the game to f4. Um, and I mean, like black would have to basically find knight c6 here. It, it's, it's just really bad. Uh, but white here plays a, a super big brain meta move. Uh, white plays king b1. It's not a blunder, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Black plays bishop to e6, and now f4 is looking juicy as ever. Um, and, and, and it's played. It is played. Now here, again, danger levels. Black actually finds the move knight c6. Knight c6 is not the world's hardest move to find. Uh, and as we're already seeing that black is sort of, white are sort of playing solidly and finding good moves, you're sort of determining the level of the game, right? I hope. So queen d3, bishop takes b3, and now you have a choice of which bishop to take. Now, you should take... A good question, actually. Which bishop should you take? You should take this bishop. Why? Like, if you play a takes b2. Why? Because your pawns stay 
apart. It's actually good that the pawns each get their individual file. What do I mean by that? Well, for example, if you take on b3 and the bishop moves, well, now, now you just keep going. The pawns kind of march together. In the game, white plays pawn takes g5, which is really bad for a couple of reasons. Number one, if black just like retreats the bishop, you're, you're kind of stuck now. Like your pawns are sort of stuck in a row. Also, this knight will live on e5 forever now, if it wants. And second of all, there's a tactical reason. Danger levels. What's worth more than a bishop? You don't need to retreat the bishop. What's worth more than a bishop? The queen. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Bishop c2. Now black is just completely winning, because black's going to take on c2 and take the rook. Or the queen, if you blunder the queen. But black doesn't see that, and black just goes back to e6. Okay, so h4, obviously. Knight e5. Queen f1. No queens are blundered, so probably in the four digits for this game. Bishop c4. Queen moves down to f4. And here, white doesn't have an exact threat, but the kind of course of action here is probably h5, g6, or h5, h6. Maybe infiltrate on the dark squares, because opposite colored bishops benefit the attacking side, because the bishop can't defend. So bishop d4, maybe something like this. Um, here, black realizes that the pin on the queen is pretty intense. Uh, and, in, and basically just presses their forehead into the barrel of the gun. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, this queen is, is, is kind of on the same line as this pawn, which means that this pawn is not actually protecting this knight. Queen takes e5 is a free knight now. If pawn takes, you take the queen for free, which, by the way, wouldn't have happened if the queen was on d8, because the queen is actually protected. So black shoots themselves in the foot. Uh, white, however, uh, shoots themselves uh, in the shoulder, so setting up now the threat of bishop takes e5 rather than just taking right away. Black responds with rook to e8. Now, make no mistake, this is still very much a thing, um, and black realizes it. Now here, it's actually a different story. It's actually a different story because your bishop took the knight. So pawn takes here is possible. It actually is possible. Because now takes takes. But black doesn't see that. Black instead plays queen c6. Okay, bishop d4, a5. Black is trying to create a little bit of counterplay. Now, at this point, you're probably like, Levy, it's been seven minutes. All right, sometimes it takes you three minutes to make the blunders, five minutes to make the blunders. Yeah, I'm setting it up. Trust me that the later half of this video is going to be 100% worth it. Okay? Don't go anywhere. This video will be like 16, 17 minutes. That 50% viewer retention rate, we're going to destroy it. We're going to get like 70, 80%. Watch. Look, white starts doing exactly what white should do. h5, h6. I told you that this was the plan. The evaluation of this position is now plus 11. g6, queen f6. I mean, it's mate. I mean, it's just going to be simply checkmate. The game is obviously going to over levy. How's this game going to last eight more uh, minutes? King f8. Okay, king f8 is the only move because you knew the queen was going to mate you, so you have to run away. Now here, what I would have liked to see from white is try to play knight to d5 because that prevents the king's escape. That also forces the opening of the e-file, a lot of these king hunts, you need to protect where the king is going. You see, when you start doing this, and this, and this, the king runs away. And at this point, you're, you're, it's difficult to adjust, because you're like, oh, I've locked all my pieces away, oh my god, and I'm gonna get attacked. So here, white plays queen takes f7 check. Now, queen takes f7 is a clean blunder of a queen. It's bishop takes queen, it's not complicated. We go from plus 20 to minus 10. But black, however, is in, a, is in a running mind and just runs away to c8, and white must have thought that they were really accomplished by taking both pawns. So white takes f7 and h7. Now the queen kind of has more vision toward over here, and the h pawn is two squares away from queen. Now, of course, black is still attacking on the queen side with b4. That's the only thing that black can do. You gotta attack the enemy king. Knight to d5. Now rook takes e4. Now, the knight is going to jump into e7 here, attacking the queen and the king. The rook needs to come back or else the queen will be lost. Takes, takes, queen g2, and h7. White is up five points of material, which effectively is a full rook, but also has one pawn away from becoming a queen. White is about to be up 14 points of material. Um, unless black does this. And sacrifices. So now white is up two rooks for one pawn. It is queen, bishop, five pawns versus queen, bishop, four pawns, and two rooks. Now, the only way to lose this with white would be to somehow get mated. But that's really difficult here, all right? That's very difficult. And for most chess players, may find, you know, getting mated, not the easiest thing in the world. Um, so what do, you, what do you do? How do you win this? Well, obviously, a queen trade would be nice, trying to force a queen trade. Or, as long as you're not in any danger, go rook h7 and just take on c7. I don't even care if it loses you a rook. If you can lose a rook or a bishop but trade the queens, all chances of losing go out the window. Okay, so black plays a4. Black is still creating a little bit of play here. 
Now, rookie one, B3. Now, this actually does look a little bit scary, except for the fact that there's absolutely nothing here. And white finds queen e4. Takes, ta uh, sorry, bishop d5 takes takes. Okay, we're in the clear. Levy, I don't know why you made me watch this video. I mean, obviously, no one's going to be making a blunder here. I mean, literally, like, black has a bishop and three pawns. You debated me. I hate you. You're my least favorite YouTuber. Nope, someone just hung a rook. Someone just hung a rook. And, folks, I think you're slowly starting to realize why I'm calling this video what it's called. You are about to witness the most unbelievable thing unfold in front of you. King a2, a rook is lost. Now, okay, we lost the rook. Obviously, if we lost one rook, we need to make sure that the other one stays on a dark square. This bishop cannot be lost by this bishop. This rook just needs to wrap around and go push the pawn. Okay, great. Nice. Yes, 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 yes. Ah, damn it. I lost my pawn. All right, well, that's a little bit subpar. Uh, probably just going to have to put this rook behind the pawn and, you know, or rook f1. But okay, rook f1, you know, trying to go rook d1 and take this pawn. Black plays bishop to c2. Now, bishop c2 is a good move. It's a good move because, you know, you don't want the rook to go to d1 and you want to play pawn d3 and your bishop and your pawn are actually going to be very strong there. Except for the fact that it literally hangs the pawn in one move. But white plays rook c1. White has tunnel vision. And now black plays d3. Now, at this point, you could look to sacrifice the rook for the bishop in some of these positions, but not in this one because now the pawn cannot be stopped. Don't do that. That's not how the game ended. Also, you can bring the bishop back so it can never go here. Now, in the game, we had king to a3 played. King to a3 is an awful move, actually. It's, it's a terrible move because the rook cannot defend against the bishop and the pawn. If the pawn were to have been pushed here, listen to what I said, were to have been pushed, then this is just a draw. Because if rook c2 d1, now black is winning probably, or maybe still a draw, but you don't want to allow that, and the alternative is to just get this position, and this is a draw. But black with just the bishop and two pawns, finds a way to push the wrong thing. Let it be known that in this position, black had a one in three chance of doing the right thing. One in three chance of moving the right piece, because you're obviously not going to move the bishop. One in three chance, and black chose wrong. And you're probably like, well, Gotham, it's like move 50 in a blitz game. I mean, obviously, it's time trouble. C5. B4. Now, let it be known that D2 is still a thing. It is still... A thing and black for whatever reason isn't pushing the pawns that are close to moves their king what are you doing your king has no purpose here but actually it turns out that black is a genius because white obviously super excited to trade immediately trades down at this point white finally takes their foot off the gas and plays bishop to c3 king to c4 now here any sane individual just puts the bishop in front of the pawn just that's it all right, we're not doing this anymore. And I got news for you. At this point, you actually can sacrifice. Because here's the thing. You're going to win this pawn because there's no more promotion. And it's important your pawn is not an A pawn in this endgame. Because if it was an A pawn, it would be queening on the wrong color square of your bishop. So if it's a B through G pawn and you have a bishop, it's over. That's it. King, bishop, pawn versus king. The game's over. You find a way to make a queen. Um, but in the game... At this point, White was like, well, you know what? You know what I haven't moved in this game yet? I feel kind of bad. It's been 52 moves, and I haven't moved my pawn. I haven't moved my pawn, so I got to move it, and I got to try to go make a queen. Except for the fact that that pawn move just straight up hangs a bishop. Like, just a... I, I mean, like, wh why? 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 So the bishop has now been taken. Now the game is a draw. Okay, you're not going to win this. Uh, the king, the bishop, and the pawn. All right, I mean, you're up two rooks. Worst things have happened in life. You know, you could have could have lost the game. So the game now concludes with the move b5, which obviously you, you got to play. I mean, that's why you played b4. You might as well go b5. Now, finally, black is like, oh, I can play d2 because my bishop's not hanging anymore, right? Because if rook c2, king c2, obviously. Even though black could have played that move several times because losing the, the, the bishop would have given back rank control. Keep that in mind. Bishop and pawn versus the rook like that on the, on the final rank. But here white goes uh, rook d1. White goes rook d1. White goes rook to d1. Takes here, here, and white resigned.
Because after D1, you're just too slow, and it's mate. Folks, let it be known that white lost this position. Now, that on its own might not be shocking to you. We have, in this series, seen all sorts of crazy things. But what if I told you, ladies and gentlemen, what if I told you that in this game, the average rating of the players was about 1,400? What if I told you that this was a 15-minute and 10-second bonus game, and what if I told you that at the end of this game, both of these players had about 11 minutes on the clock. Let that sink in.